You may begin. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to talk to group. I'd like to welcome our guests that are joining us today. My group would like to thank you for allowing us to participate in this uh, presentation and share with you what we've learned about the Detroit Motor Corporation. First off, uh, I'll introduce our group. I'm Timothy Smith, Ms. Latia Carter, Ms. Gabrielle Cortez, Mrs. Stone Cypher, and last but not least, Ms. Corey Clark. I'm going to talk to you first about the history of Toyota. Toyota started off as a very small subdivision of a textile manufacturing company. This company produced uh, fabric, and what they did was they loomed it through the process of taking spools of thread and turning it into sheets of fabric. The uh, Toyota founder, Mr. Terichi Toyota, and his son built, patented, and marketed as well as used their looms. Uh, in this endeavor, they traveled to both Europe and to the Americas during the 20s and 30s. During these trips, they encountered automobiles, which were not common in Japan at the time. The younger Toyota was so taken by automobiles that while in Europe, he purchased an electric automobile in the 30s. Brought it back to Japan for his own personal use. And one of the things that he found, which is very uh, similar to what people say today, is even after charging all night, you just can't drive them very far. So he knew there was a lot of room for improvement on the automobile as, as a whole. The automobile didn't take hold in uh, Japan until the great Kanto earthquake. This earthquake essentially devastated the entire island of Japan. It destroyed homes, businesses, schools, and even their primary mode of transportation was supposed to railway system. Japan needed to rebuild and rebuild quickly, and they essentially could. So they contacted both Ford and GM, and they sent over thousands of trucks that were used to rebuild the country. It was during this uh, influx of automobiles that the younger Toyota says, you know, we can build them here too. So they approached uh, different investors, and one of the ones that they uh, approached was uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Toyota. That's where the spelling of the company comes from and not the name of the owner, which I found interesting. So he invested in the company early on, he got name credits, and they started building cars. To do this, they had to import cars to copy or emulate. And they brought in cars like the Soto. They took them apart on the factory floor, measured them, uh, did engineering on them to try to improve them and meet Japanese individual markets. And what they found was that they weren't as good as uh, the Americans building cars early on. There were mistakes made. One example was the wells that Jim was using was, was uh, adequate and held in use, but when they tried to emulate it in Japan, it broke. So they had to repair all these wells. And what the founder says we need to do is in, uh, develop a just-in-time uh, manufacturing system. And what they would only do is make what they needed for the next day's production runs uh, to have an inventory. And the mindset was that if something breaks or they find a weakness in the manufacturing system, they can repair what's already been made and they had less in stock to repair or to scrap, which saved them money. It's this kind of mindset that Toyota's built on is what has made them the number one company in uh, cars today. And with this, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Tia Carter, and she's gonna talk to you a little bit about Toyota's missions and principles. Hello, everyone. Uh, Toyota focuses on um, building a sustainable society and that's what they gear their vehicles to. Uh, they are really focusing on decreasing the amount of pollutants and um, making cars easier to use for their uh, consumers. Um, their mission statement, um, as you can see right here, pretty much encompasses that. And uh, they use their guiding principles to produce their vehicles. And they also um, have other ventures that help them go to their goal of creating a sustainable uh, society. Um, just touching on Toyota's principles, uh, the history of Toyota's principles started with the founder, and he had five guiding principles, and he wanted to make sure that uh, the employees had a direction, and really he wanted 
uh, very ethical uh, foundation, and he wanted to make uh, a direction towards um, faithfulness and uh, respectfulness and um, just honesty, pretty much, in his uh, principles. And these are the principles that they still have today. Uh, they added on a couple of uh, principles, but they mainly focus on um, being morally correct, globally respecting people's um, preferences and cultures and things like that. And that's what really made them, uh, gave, gave them a competitive advantage because they um, focus on the respect of everyone, not just what they think um, should be. Uh, the co corporate and social responsibility is very interesting because they're not just um, involved in automobiles, even though they are one of the leading um, companies that produce the most efficient uh, automobiles. They also um, have important ventures in uh, like creating robots. They're creating robots to help people. That's one of their ventures. They also have ventures um, right now they implemented in France where they created the smart cars and the, um, um, the chargers to go with them within the city. And they're trying to see how that goes, uh, just to see if they can spread it throughout the uh, world to see if it will help you know, change the way we view cars and we use cars. And this is also working towards the goal of uh, a sustainable society. And they also work with governments and um, the academic world and efforts to do this. And they um, have another venture that's uh, trying to decrease the amount of traffic casualties. So they increase the awareness to that and um, they really focus on that with their cars and giving awareness to people through seminars and things of that nature. Their co corporate governments, they don't have many um, issues, and I think most of that deals with the fact that their um, presidents and their board members are direct descendants of the founder, and this keeps their principles in line and uh, allows them to operate a little bit more smoothly. They also um, are publicly traded and have been publicly traded since 19. And I'm going to turn over the external analysis to Ms. Gabriella. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to do the external analysis, which has to do with the Porter Spot Forces and the Macro Environment and the Strategic Movement. Um, Porter Spot Forces involves the um, the bargaining power buyers, bargaining power suppliers, threat and entry, um, threat of substitutes, and the of the bargaining. One thing I found um, interesting about the bargaining power supplies, and I don't know if you can see the outline of the states in it, but they do most of their supplies in different states. Um, they have California, North Carolina, Maine, New York, who does different supplies for them. They also do, they have different factories in which they manufacture different cars, like the Camry and the Vinsa and the Fritas, which is done in Virginia and some in Kentucky. 